Running our own business isn't easy and it can be a tough gig for all of us at times and only other business owners truly understand the challenges that we face. And on Scale Up Radio, we aim to help make things just that little bit easier by interviewing guests who have been where you are now, regardless of where you are on the Scale Up journey, and maybe facing some of the challenges that you are facing. And they offer their thoughts and advice on what has worked well for them as well as what didn't, of course. And we've also combined many of these lessons into a practical scale-up handbook called the Entrepreneurial Scale-Up System. And there's details of this at the end of the episode. So welcome to Scale-Up Radio. Hello, Ori Hellerstein. Welcome to Scale-Up Radio. Please introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, it's uh, my name is Ori Hellerstein. I'm the owner of the Artisan Baker uh, based in Stroud. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Brilliant. Well, well welcome. So, Artisan Baker, probably guess what that's about, but please tell us about your business. You know, how how big are you? How long have you been going? What do you do? So we are a bakery, as you can tell uh, from the name. Uh, I started the business back in uh, 2012. So uh, just over 11 years. Uh, yeah, 1st of November. Um, and um, it, yeah, I started uh, just myself and now we've got about 27 people um 11 years onwards so yeah it's a big pro- progress yeah fantastic and are, are you only in stroud uh so uh no we uh opened a coffee shop uh, slash bakery in cheltenham as well and that was uh opened last october we don't do much baking there and we get everything from our um our, uh, stroud shop it's kind of uh, more of a central bakery that we do everything there so products what what, what do you make what what does a, what does an artisan baker make that sells so well so we specialize in uh in, in bread uh, we've got um a range of sourdoughs uh we got uh, ordinary bread such as uh, wholemeal and, and white. They're a bit more special, of course, because they are uh, uh, overnight uh, proof, um, which enhance the flavor. Um, and then we do pastries. Uh, we have a range of uh, the ordinary butter pastries that um, uh quite often uh, found uh, at bakeries. Uh, but what's more unique is uh, we do a range of vegan pastries that uh, uh, really took off um, kind of in uh, last year, um, September last year, uh, we started uh, to um, uh, wholesale um, those. And uh, yeah, it's there's it a big, big demand for vegan food and uh, I'm glad we managed to do something a bit special with, with with the bakery side of things. And in, in, in Stroud, so you've got the bakery in Stroud, do you sell through a shop in Stroud like you you have a, a coffee shop in Cheltenham or you know what, what's your what's your go-to-market model then? So the, uh, the Stroud uh, shop is very different is uh, it, it is a shop there's a shop front um but it's only very little it's uh at the entrance um at the back of that shop um there is the whole bakery where we bake everything um and you can see it's an open plan so you can see all the bakers work um so it's quite a, a unique experience you you go there as a customer and you can see the bakers actually make the products um uh, you could sit there and have coffee there as well. Um, we got probably about ten seats there, but it is it's mainly groceries. You, you buy uh, your pastries, your loaves, uh, and kind of you go home. <laughs> and then yeah, the the Cheltenham shop is a, is a is a very different. Is uh, to go and and sit down, relax with friends. Uh, it's situated on Imperial Park. Um, and we got those big doors that you can open up and you feel like you're sitting 
at the park. Uh, it's very special. Um, and everything that I chose to, um, in terms of design and uh, crockery, gives a very special uh, experience altogether with our products that match um, uh, to, to give the, the customer the, a very unique experience uh, with with our products with good coffee. Um, yeah, have you been? Right. No, no, I haven't. Uh, I'm I'm based in Gloucester. I haven't been over. So uh, oh, right. okay. you've already you already uh, triggered me to uh, to go and find out because occasionally I meet clients uh, in uh, in Cheltenham. So so thank you. I will definitely uh, do that, Ori. So you know. A open plan, um, you know, bakery, you know, with with the shop at the right. front. Is is that is that is that normal? I, you know, apologies, I I don't know. Uh, there are a few places like that, but not many. Um, majority of of uh, bakeries uh, shops that you see, it's uh, it's just a, a shop front, and you can buy your bread and pastry, but uh, you can't see behind the scenes. Uh, what's going on and with us you can it's uh, very visible um yeah there there are no walls there we've got nothing to hide <laughs> so it's all there <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> so what 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 makes you different than than Ori? what 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 do you strive to be best at um yeah i i think um the way we differentiate with the other bakeries is um, uh, we do have um, a different product range, um, which is our uh, vegan uh, pastries, but also we do do some special things um, kind of from, I chose my, the range of, of products from around the world uh, from my experiences, from my travels. Um, and then we have a bread from South Africa, which is uh, a seeded loaf, um, which is very popular, very special. Uh, it's named after Nelson Mandela. Um, so we have those little things uh, that are kind of different from uh, the other bakeries, um, which, yeah, every year there is... <laughs> another bakery and another bakery opened it up. So yeah, we, we could always kind of thinking, okay, what, what we do, how, how can we be different, um, than the rest? Um, but also, yeah, I, I kind of the way we work is I, I give the baker quite a lot of freedom and, um, allowing them to use their creativity, um, uh, and, we always looking for new things, um, which is very unique. We got a really unique way of how we work as a team, the culture in the bakery. Um, yeah, it's, it's very, very special. It's, it's hard work, um, but we try to have a, a really nice kind of environment to, to come to work to and, and, create um create and 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 bake and um put in your hands into the work um yeah it's it's very um it's very manual uh work so kind of we don't have many machinery around uh this is a lot to do with with people's hands um and uh, yeah it's, it's it's a special special place to to work and also the um, bakers can see the customers, which is it's not something that you see very often. And uh, sometimes even them, they sell the bread to the customer. So there are like this uh, conversations between customer uh, and the bakers of oh, how did you make it? Oh, more of technical things that you would want to ask as a customer, but you can't really do it in most places. So with us, mm. it's we're there, you know, with the knowledge is there 
and uh, yeah, we, we actually like to, to have this conversation interaction between our clients. That, that's brilliant. Yeah, I never really thought about that, but that is a very special activity to actually talk to the baker, talk to the person that's made the food, because even in, you don't even get that in restaurants really normally, do you? So that, that's that's something quite special. So you, you talked about, you know, there, there are bakeries opening up all the time, you know, so the marketplace is, is, is growing. So what, what are the trends in the marketplace? Uh, there, there is a lot of uh, vegan movement, a lot of gluten-free movement uh, that kind of uh, more bakeries are trying to tap into those uh, channels um, uh, because they, they are getting uh, more popular. Um, I've, I've been to a few conferences and they said as well, um, that this is the future of food. This is vegan food and uh, gluten free, um, and yeah, there, there are more products on those lines that uh, that we are trying as well as a bakery to explore all the time. And is is uh, is is competition fierce? Is you know do you... um I think yeah the the recent global events um covid cost of living uh war in ukraine um i think we kind of uh kind of stable on 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 that note um uh a lot of bakery changed the way they work um some of them are completely decided they don't do wholesale at all um and they have their their own uh, different channels of selling their products which i'm i'm not there um so i think before covid it was a lot more fiercer competition and now it's probably more everyone is falling to a different niche and tap into different um uh, groups of customers, footfalls. Um, so I feel like it's more spread out than before. It's not as fierce as before. I remember I, when I started, I was um, another with another bakery at the farmer's market in Stroud. And then um, three years later, there were four or five bakeries in the same market. And that was the only channel I did at the time. So yeah, I felt like, wow, okay, I really need to be on top of my game here. Um, so I think it's a bit more relaxed, but you never know what's coming next month, next week, who is going to open next to you. It, there's no guarantees. Uh, so you always need to be um, one step ahead. And do you, do you find because the your you know artisan bakery you're making it more with hand you can have conversations like do you do you get repeat customers you know or just sort of new customers or yeah I've got um, customers who has been with me um, since day one and I still see them when I'm there in Stroud so it's it's really nice um, and then yeah we have new customers coming in um, we actually uh see the last few months uh probably august quite a lot of new customers coming in which is is fantastic for us um probably more people are moving towards stroud we were part of a big tea show as well so i think uh um that had something to do with that as well what what was the show? <laughs> the show was um, of uh, us working with Gloucester Services. Uh, it's called um, a Cotswold Farm Shop, uh, and, and it was on Channel Four. You can still watch it online. Um, we are episode four, and uh, yeah, after that show, we kind of didn't know how the impact of it will be. Um, but it was a bit mental uh, in August and uh, things slowed down slightly, but still we are very over what we projected. 
uh, to do, which is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with that, with the impact wow. of the show. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and you know, let, let's talk about marketing. So what, what is your sort of, what is your normal marketing tactics, you know, and how do you engage with uh, the wider audience? Uh, so yeah, we use the uh, usual suspects: Instagram, Facebook. Um, we try to do uh, two, three weekly posts and stories on social media, um, and uh, I think that that's kind of pretty much uh, it in terms of um, uh, PR that we we do. Um, because I've been around for quite quite some time, eleven years, um, I, I I get um, more recognizable than uh, when I first started. So um, it's it is easier uh, for sure. Um, the TV show was something that I, I didn't plan before, um, and when I was asked to be part of it. I, I definitely jumped on it. Um, but yeah, the the viewing rating was over a million. Uh, million people watched that uh, across the country. So um, yeah, I do get stopped every now and again, and uh, people say, "Oh, we saw you on on this show," and uh, it's, <laughs> it's quite <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it's good. interviewing a uh, you know TV star. So, wow, fantastic! Thank you, Ori. <laughs> let, let, let's let's go back now to you know, the journey, the growth from eleven years, twenty seven people. We have got some really interesting conversations to come. I'm really sure about that. So, go back to the beginning. What? Why did you start the uh, artisan baker? What was the the start of it? Um, so uh, I was working as a pastry chef in, in London and um, uh, me and my wife had our first uh, baby um, uh, yeah, 11 years ago and we kind of wanted a, a better um, lifestyle and uh, leave the hustle and bustle of, of London, uh, especially with the, with the young one. Um, and we want obviously more more space. Uh, um, so that was the uh, initial reason why we kind of uh, left to the Cotswolds. Um, and yeah, I had this dream to open my own place. Um, I, I honestly didn't think much about it. Uh, I didn't really have a good business plan or or. or finance or anything i started everything with uh, i think it was about seven thousand pounds the business uh, that's all i had and uh i kind of thought oh what, what can i do and and came up with a bakery idea and uh yeah i just i just went for it yeah it was a hard start uh because uh, I didn't know the the area, the competition. I wasn't quite sure of what I'm offering, who are my clients. Uh, yeah, it, it was very strange, uh, but uh, exciting at the same time. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, the bakeries are always kind of fascinated me because uh, my mom used to have a shop um in jerusalem uh it was a bread shop uh in a deli and uh, i spent most of my uh childhood years over there uh mainly eating uh but also helping out and uh yeah i think it was something that i brought from my childhood so you always had it uh, in you as, as, a, as a dream from that, uh, that that's brilliant so yeah. Yeah, uh, over the last seven years, what 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 what's gone right? What's gone wrong? What, give us some of your uh, key insights. The business evolved so much um, over the years. Um, I, I I started uh, as a bakery, um, did loads of uh, wholesale, uh, did farmers market. Uh, I was kind of on my own 
um, at first, and then I had some someone helping. Um, but yeah, it was kind of twenty four seven me hands on, and uh, kind of exhaust myself to the point of burning out. Uh, I think that was the first few years. Um, and after that, um, I kind of, a few years later, I decided I can't, I can't continue as it is and had to shut all the wholesale um, entirely um, and just do once a week a farmer's market um, and just do everything myself. Um, before that, there was a, a very low point, uh, that I was practically homeless for a month, um, for various reasons, but also, yeah, business wise, I kind of, I was in a, a strange place. Um, and, uh, I think that, yeah, that was the lowest point, uh, for sure. Um, and, um, I, I, for some reason I carried on, um, I don't know why, but um, I just don't like to give up. Um, uh, it's not my sort of, uh, thing, um, and, uh, carried on, uh, Willie, we were living at the time, uh, with Yvonne's mum. uh, up in Cheshire. So I had to travel down every week, uh, for four days and, uh, stay over with some friends and, and carry on the farmer's market. Um, carried on another, uh, few things I had. Um, and, uh, yeah, slowly we kind of, uh, got things under control. Uh, managed to find a place um, in Painswick um, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, had a home uh, and uh, grow slowly the business back up again. Um, and then, yeah, we, I was quite like steady for a few years, just doing farmer's market, uh, doing some other products with, uh, chocolates, um, and, um, and then COVID hit, uh, that, that was, uh, another strange moment, uh, that everything literally just stopped. Um, and, um, yeah, it was very, very hard, um, to, to know what, what to do next. Because we, yeah, we just, you know, when, wh how long is going to last? Yeah. Um, and how many so, staff did you have at that time when COVID hit? I had a, a wonderful, two, two part-time staff, actually, that um, kept helping me. Um, but because they, they obviously they didn't have anything else <laughs> to do as well because no one was working. Um, so yeah, I kind of um, uh, worked uh, to the best of my abilities at that time, uh, improvising with uh, bread deliveries, bread collection. Uh, I even, uh, we live on a, an estate here in Cheltenham and you know, I literally took courses from all my neighbors every week and kind of did a, a round of deliveries, um, at the estate every, each week. Um, so yeah, very, very bizarre, uh, time, uh, but we kind of made it work, uh, for, for a little bit, um, and then um, throughout all that came an opportunity, um, which uh, was uh, in Stroud. It was a new development uh, at the um, previously Mary Walks uh, shopping center, an old and tired shopping center that uh, went through uh, renovation. 
Um, so yeah, I've been kind of uh, asked to see if uh, I can move there and um, open a bakery there, move my equipment, open the bakery there with a shop that opens seven days a week. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I it, it took a few weeks of thinking about a workout a plan and I thought that at the time that was probably the best move I could do with with the current condition uh, at the time so uh, yeah I, I went for it and uh, we we opened up a shop um, and suddenly from like a once a week farmers market bake now we we work seven days a week uh and bake seven days a week so the transition was uh was very difficult i think the, the whole move itself was one of the hardest things i've done uh, physically right uh, moving all the everything from uh a unit that is 10 minutes drive down the road um yeah it was uh <laughs> was a good fun um uh, you went. You went for it. You've. You've now. You, you had two part-time staff uh, just before that moment, and now here you are with twenty-seven staff. Wow! I mean, that's a rapid growth in two years. Yes. So, how how have you gone about? You talked about value and culture. How have you gone about finding the right people? Um. So, um, when we opened, it was still in the height of COVID. Um. And although it was very exciting and um, moving to a new premises, having your own shop, but still uh, the footfall wasn't there uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and um, I mean, we, we were very fortunate and, and lucky to have help from the government, uh, all the hospitality grants, kind of really helped us to to keep going and not to be forced to be shut. Um, and I, I haven't furloughed anyone. We we kept our staff. We still opened up, but it was it was very quiet. I must say it was very quiet for for a couple of years. And um, yeah, I had to think, okay, how <laughs> how we change this strategy and make, make it work. Um, uh, because yeah, it, it just, um, putting everything on the, on figures and, uh, with the footfall we had just didn't make sense. Um, so I had to uh, do a good rethink and, uh, then I decided to start, uh, the wholesale back again. Uh, so I used, my contacts with uh, uh, with a few great businesses uh, such as Gloucester Services, uh, Johnny Nice, um, and we started uh, to have the conversation with them. And uh, yeah, there, there was there was the um, the opportunity to actually make it work. Um, so we started that and uh while we uh having those discussions we also um had a, a plan to open another a shop for for ourselves uh in cheltenham in a in a in a great location where footfall isn't isn't a, a, an issue um in it and it's in a prime location uh, and uh, we thought, okay, we'll open uh, a second shop, but it will be very much acting like a, a wholesale. So we supply our Cheltenham shop with our products uh, as part of the wholesale uh, kind of uh, uh, delivery route. Um, so, um, yeah, from... Um, uh, two hundred and seventy thousand pounds turnover uh, last year. We are now uh, talking about nine hundred and forty thousand. Uh, 
on on with with the two businesses together. So uh, it's a it's a it's a big growth. We we had and and still do have some grow, growing pains, but it, it is getting better. Um, it, I kind of. Uh, I didn't realize how how much uh, it takes to to actually um, make sure we can maintain that uh, volume because uh, I just went for it. With, you know, I, I had a kind of certain idea, but then when the reality hits, oh, you need a, a new piece of machinery. You need uh, more of this, more of that. Um, need to do some alteration to our equipment. Um, yeah, it was all very, um, very exciting, um, but also kind of, um, yeah, lo loads of planning as well. So something that I, um, uh, I think could have taken probably sh a shorter time, um, in, in a different reality, because again, we, we still, um uh, facing some difficult financial uh times uh, and I, I think um um that didn't make the, this challenge easier yeah uh, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 staff so you know you, you've grown quite rapidly so how, how how have you gone about finding the right staff that uh that, that work with you and meet the the values and your culture Yes, uh, finding staff was very, very hard, and, and and still, it's a big challenge to find uh, skilled people in the baking industry, um, especially after Brexit, uh, which we lost four hundred thousand uh, workers from Europe, um, and uh, there is they, you know. If, before Brexit, uh, I went to a few bakeries, and, and the, the majority of people who work at, at the normal bakery was uh, from Eastern European countries. Um, so we totally lost that, uh, and so that, the task was harder. Um, what I, what we did then is um, advertise for. Uh, kind of junior roles uh, with us to just come in and learn the the craft um, from zero. Uh, all, all you needed is is, uh, is is to be uh, with passion. That you you know if you have an Instagram of uh, loads of pictures of, of what I've made and stuff like that. Yeah, you you are the right person for us, and uh, uh, people who love baking. I think that was the the first thing that, uh, yeah, that ticked the 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 right um, uh, box for us to to join and and to have the willing to learn. Um, so yeah, the the. There was a trial and errors, obviously, but uh, we somehow managed to make it work. Um, and then when the business grew um, last year, I kind of came to a realization that we can't have any more junior bakers. We need to have actually someone very senior or or two or three people very, very senior uh, to lead those juniors um, to what we are doing now, which is, is, is totally different. Um, so yeah, we, we were uh, an absence of a head baker for six months um, and we, we kind of somehow uh, made it through uh, with, with the current team that, that we had um and and now uh, i think the the last piece uh, of of the of the baker team is coming at the end of this month and i can say that we are fully fully staffed after uh, a crazy year and a half of of big growth um so yeah so for a senior person it it, it takes 
six about six months to find the right person um so it it, it is tough tough to find uh, someone and that's very important you know because there's no way you can get your hand around 27 staff that's just impossible so you need those senior leaders senior bakers senior people yeah those people that can lead other people not necessarily just be managers but the ability to lead them so how have you how do you work then with your senior team to ensure that the leadership is right? Um, so, um, yeah, I, I, we got a regular conversation. I think the communication is, is a key. We, I kind of very much believe in, uh, open conversation, um, with me as a person, I, I, um, I'm very open. I like to hear what they say. Uh, there's no um, uh, ego at all. It's just, uh, yeah, we, we just, I just want to make the business work um, to the best ability uh, of mine. And I, I tend to have people that um, have... Uh, other skills than me and, and they're better in some areas um, and then we can all work together as, as a team um, so I quite like that um, and I give them a lot of freedom to my managers um, uh, to create uh, to operate uh, and I, I'm there if they need my support with certain things but I do like to give them the, the freedom to work and uh, I think um, they enjoy it as well as as uh, as, as much as uh, as I do you know so we, it's it's quite a nice nice environment for for uh, for the leadership um, kind of team brilliant brilliant and you you, you mentioned it in terms of it, it's it's the cash cash is king you've mentioned the, your growth the the pinch points some of the difficulties so how, how do you keep an eye on on cash and uh, what's happening in the business <laughs> wow yeah cash flow is is a is a real thing and uh yeah winter was tough um the the whole uh cost of living, living crisis that um started um last uh january i believe um there was a lot of uh uh scaremongering on the media about it and i i didn't help at all and um yeah it was a tough tough um uh, winter uh which was very challenging with the cash flow um but um yeah, I kind of learned now that um, I can't look at, at the full year. Uh, I, I can't kind of uh, work with just what's at present, what's in front of me at the moment. I need to think about, okay, yes, uh, the first quarter is always quiet and then uh, summer will come uh and 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 things will kind of waking up a bit um so um i think that for me was a good lesson to to learn uh this year because everything is kind of new to me now with with this new model um so i keep learning myself um so i know now i've got full year of this uh big growth um, and I kind of know what the year is a, a, a title. Um, so I do loads of projections, um, uh, cash flow projections for the following year. I've got a plan till uh, end of uh, 2024, um, uh, w which I can I know exactly how I am with, with the cash flow. Uh, I know exactly uh when are the big events in cheltenham like the literature festival uh, a few weeks ago I, I know it's going to be super busy um so i can plan um uh my year uh, accordingly brilliant yes no it becomes very important to start to 
know the cycles, know the cash cycles, see what's happening and build that. So, uh, yes. and uh, gives you that trust and that capability. So f- thank you so much. Really inspiring to, to hear that growth that you've naturally developed uh, as you've gone through each of the stages of your business development. So, um, so we're going to have a coffee or come to your shop in five years' time, you know, maybe more than one, but, uh, you know, and we're going to sit and talk about the last five years. So what's happened both professionally and personally for you for those five years to be a success? Um, I think uh, if we break it uh, down a bit, so I think uh, the following year will be concentrating on how we uh, polish our operation how we minimize mistakes, um, how we work better uh, as a team, making the more systems in place that uh, we are currently building. Um, and then once that is sorted, um, I think we can then look at perhaps opening uh, another coffee shop somewhere in the Cotswolds, um, one or two um and yeah that's kind of where the business can go um once we sort out the how the how we work now as a a, as a um with the growth that we've done and then we know a bit better how to scale it up but um i think to scale up again three times it's something that I don't think is wise to do, and so I think the growth will be a bit uh, slower this this uh, next five years. Wow, oh, that, that's a, in, in really inspiring. You know, yeah, you doubled it, but I mean, maybe you don't need to slow down. We'll see. We'll see. So, I mean, thank you for this amazing conversation. You know, started yeah, back yeah. in two thousand and twelve. You know what what you've done from those really difficult days when you talked about you know things weren't working you know you uh, had to move out you know you were traveling to and from um you know, to to get to the, the baking done and only working you know with with a few people along came covid and and the difficulties in that but what what's really inspiring is you then went ah here's an opportunity i'm going to go for it you could see where you could go and you've always had that mind that eye of where you wanted to go because you've seen that that bakery you know, you grew up in a bakery with with your mother you saw that what could be done and you knew that and you knew that would be the right move it's always hard, absolutely. And you talked about having to move the equipment yourself and the difficulties of it and the cash flow and the diff- and the structures and COVID still wasn't over. But you had that passion, you had that direction, you knew what you wanted to do. And since then, you know, you've grown the business, you've now got a coffee shop, you've moved into vegan pastries, you've built a leadership team around you and you're giving them the power to grow the business and be successful in their own rights with, with you. And I can definitely see that you'll easily achieve the growth for your next three, four coffee shops, if not more. I think you're underestimating the skill (laughs) of building a business, and that's what you've gone through and achieved. And thank you so much for those great thoughts of wisdom that you've given us today. So we always finish with a quick fire round. So if I may, um, if you go back to your younger self, what advice would you give yourself? (laughs) Um, So um, I I think... um, yeah, patient, um, uh, and just kind of breathe a bit more. I think <laughs> that that's probably the the best thing. Um, and just yeah, if things what like what's the worst can happen, you know. So Brilliant. now I I'm very spiritual, so I kind of I learned over the years that yeah, just just breathe everything will be fine as long as you have a plan and you're committed. Brilliant. Yes. If you have a command, a plan and you are committed, thank you. Really good advice. Which books do you recommend? Um, so I, I, I like two particular books that um, I think will be uh, great for any, any person who would like to open a business. Uh, so one is uh, Tony Robbins. Um 
it's it's on Audible. Um, I I don't have much time to read, so I do put the Audible on my way to Stroud. So I've got like an, an hour <laughs> every day of Audible books. So uh, Tony Robbins is great. Um, I think it's uh, Unleash the Power Within. Uh, there is another one, Money Master the Game. Yeah. Um, which is a great one as well. Uh, it's, it's a bit long, but it's really good. Um, the other one for a bit of spirituality is uh, Karma uh, by Sadhguru, uh, which is highly recommended for not just for business, for uh, just how to manage your uh, your life, daily life. And oh, it's yeah. great. Okay. On your, on your mobile phone, are there any apps that make a difference for you? Yeah, yeah, it is funny. We we talked about uh, me saying I should have breathed a bit more. Uh, so yeah, I've got this app by Wim Hof. Uh, if you know uh, the AKA Iceman from uh, the Netherlands. Ah oh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so he. I've done a course of um, of breathing and then uh, going to. Uh, 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 an ice bath after, which was very interesting. Uh, so anyway, he got the nap of breathing, um, uh, which I do every day. Uh, it's a half an hour of deep breathing work, uh, which is fantastic for uh, mental health and uh, just being being stronger uh, every day. So that that's a good one, the Wim Hof app. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, my favorite question of all, who's had the most influence on you as a business leader? Uh, gosh, I must say my wife. Um, I always done everything uh, with Yvonne and always ask for advice. And um, yeah, I always find her to, you know, to lead me the way, show me the light. Um, so yeah, Yvonne. And finally, Ori, how can people get hold of you? Um, so you can uh, visit our website, uh, theartisanbaker.co.uk. Um, there is an email address there, um, which is inquiries at theartisanbaker.co.uk. Um, I often, personally, I'm often in Stroud uh, shop or oh, Cheltenham. Uh, I'm kind of in in and out of both locations so you can uh, grab me there if, if you want to brilliant all right well thank you so much for this amazing conversation today pleasure yeah pleasure thank you very much for having me i hope you enjoyed that discussion and if you're building and scaling your own business you might well be interested in our book the entrepreneurial scale-up system and it's exactly what it says on the tin it's a practical handbook around scaling a business in a structured way and you can order a copy on all your favorite online retailers including an audio version or you can find it and other supporting resources on our website www.esusgroup.co.uk that's esus group group.co.uk which is e-s-u-s-g-r-o-u-p dot co dot uk this has been a monkey pants productions podcast